Hi everybody, welcome back to the Taxable channel. Today, in this video, I am going to show you the capability of Oracle Process Automation and how we can automate the role access management with the help of process automation. Before I get into the depth of this video, I will request everybody to subscribe to my channel and click on a bell icon to get regular updates. So as part of this video, I'm going to show how do we leverage the Oracle process automation to automate the role access provisioning. For example, somebody joins the organization and in the organization, there are various applications. The user needs access of those applications. But before they access the application, the, the request should be approved by manager. And also the user must have some interface from where they can request for the, for the application, right? And once they submit the button, it should call the process automation and manager should be notified. And once manager is notified, manager either can approve and reject basis on the decision. If he approves, the 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 integration or the SaaS APIs can be called to provide the role access or any other application which actually help us to provide the role access. So let's get started and see how do we can achieve this use case. I'm not going to show you the complete end to end, but here we'll show how do we leverage the Oracle process automation to create the process automation that can be kicked off from anywhere as per our requirement. So let's begin and then I will show you how do we do this. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open my process, which is my Oracle process automation. And from here, you have to click on a create button, sorry, click on a create button and create a application, let's say role provisioning, P-R-O. Provisioning and click on a create button. So when I will create an application, it will create an application and you need to click on a open now, which will open my role provisioning. This is the blank application and it will show you what all artifacts we have in my application. Since it is a new application, nothing is there. The first thing first, I will have to decide who all will be the personas to my application. And the first step I'm going to show, how do we add personas or roles of this application? So I can go to the roles tab and here you have to click on a new button to create a new role. And if any global role exists, you can link that global role into your application as well. But let's try to create a new role for now for that particular application, let's say applicant. Or let okay applicant and there you have to decide whether it will be an application specific role or it's a global role. So global role will be visible to every application that you create. But let's say I am going to create a role that is private to this application and click on a create button. So the first role is created here and that is visible here. Similar to this, let me create one more row. Role click on an add button and let's new and let's say manager and click on a create button. So I have two roles now. Now you have to tell who all can access your application, who can raise the request, who can approve it. So as an applicant, you have to add users. So when you click on this particular, you can see the list, the user or the group who need access of this applicant role. So when you click on a user, you can search a user from here, let's say TS. I will search one of my user, let's say TS, and then done. So here you can see the TS has been added to the applicant role. And then what permission you wanted to define for that particular user use. When I say use, default is use, meaning the user can look at the application to initiate the request or he can manage his own request as well. Manage is the higher level permission who can manage the things that can be done by the use permission plus some additional tasks. Read will not will not allow user to do anything, but they can 
view the task and then they can see what all information has been added there. So, and then similarly, you go back and then go to the role and then choose manager. Now I wanted to give manager access to someone else so that let's say AJ and that's it. So I have given user AJ and then again, I'm giving use permission only. But if you give manage permission, that user can approve the request and then see the analytics also. So there may be a possibility like you wanted to give the group access. That's fine. Let's say this. So the first step is completed. The second step, I'm going to add the UI, meaning how user will raise a request. So I will click on an add button and click on a web form. And let's say role access form and click on a create button. So when you click on a create button, it will open. Uh, it will not open. You have to click on open now. It will create open a uh, web form that you can design. And here you can see there are various controls that can be used to, to, uh, to create your form. So for now, let's say input text. All right. Let's say uh, this is for application. This is for what type of role he needs. And let's say date and let's say text area. So these are the five controls. One, two, three, four, five. I have added here. Now you have to change the property of each. So click here, double click, which will open the properties at the left man, left side. And let's say name. And let's say enter name. Select this. This is select and let's say application. So which application you need access. So let's say choose application. And then you can go down and then you can choose, you can add the static option or you can add from data or connector. So for now, let's say option names, let's say Oracle. You then let's say Oracle sales or let's say Oracle HCM. So I need three. So let's say fusion sales SCM. All right. So here you can see. Then choose another select and let's say access type. What type of access do you need? Choose access type. So here you can say again static. Let's say I need admin access. I need uh, manager level access or I need read level access or let's say auditor. Whatever. So I'm it's adding three for now. Let's say open option values are the same. Then date till what date you need access. Let's say access and date. Access and date. And then justification. Enter justification. So I have all those. Now here you can collapse those properties and here my form is ready. And now when you click on a preview, you can see your form, how it looks like on a small device, medium device, large device, and extra large device. Okay, close. Now my form is ready. The third, the third thing I need to add a process. So you can click on an add and let's say a structured process. And let's say role processing process and then create. So when you click on a create button, what it will do, it will add your process and that will be visible here. So here we have a start event and we have an end event. So these are the two swim lanes and in the swim lane, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click add it and then we'll add which role will be used by uh, which role will use that particular swim lane. So click on a edit. There you have to choose the role that you have created. Let's say applicant. You can change the background color. Let's say this. Okay. And similarly, I will add another one. Let's say manager. So I have two swim lanes now. Okay. Now, so this is my start event. So you can see this is my 
the start event. So here I'm going to add a approve action here. And then I will change the sequence flow from here and there because when user will start, it will go to the user task. And then here I need to check whether user approves it or reject. So here I will say, this is my manager. Let's say resubmit. So you can double click to resubmit. And then what you need to do, you need one gateway, exclusive gateway, which allows me to check whether manager approves, approved or reject. So I will do here like this. Okay. And then we'll add this and we'll add a condition also. And then this. Okay, so here you see the red dots. These red dot indicate there is some error. So meaning there are some mandatory property that you have to configure. So let's, this is my form. Let's say we start. Or let's say, let's say we start. I cannot say raise request. Okay, that is my name. Double click here which will open the properties panel here. See the name that you have given. So who can try this activity user with the use permission, like you have given the use permission while you have created the role or any user who has who has access of the process requires user authentication. For now, let's say user will use permission. Title of the form, let's say raise your role access request. UI. You have to choose the UI that so that user can do, see the form and then raise the request. So click outside. So these are the mandatory properties that you need to define. Click outside. Let's configure this. Double click. It's a manager. Assignee. Policy. Any single assignee who will who approve, who go, who's going to approve the leave. Any single assignee current lane participant, whosoever has been added into the manager can approve it. Or you can say any individual assignee and then you can assign to any user. So for now, let's say all assignee and then current lane participant and then title of the request. So you can click on this to add some expression. Let's say request receive for Role access request. Let's say role access request received for plus click this form dot application name. Okay, so that is your title. Role access request for application name. If you want to add somebody, you can do that as well. And then if you wanted to show UI to the user, you can select and then let's say role access form. And then bind to process data, which will bind the data from this to this role access form arguments. Okay. And then task data object. And then there are two actions, approve and reject. If you want to change, you can change it as well. There are other properties that you can set, but for now let's leave them. Then I need to hear when manager approves or rejects, it will go to the exclusive gateway. And these workflow, these sequence flow are used to add conditions. So click here and then click add it. Let's say it's like reject. And here you have to add condition. Let's say task outcome data object double equals, let's say reject the action name. Okay, and this is my auto uh, default condition. You see, conditional flow is unchecked, meaning that is that is not uh, that is default condition. Resubmit. Double click here. Let's say title. Let's say resubmit your request, and then UI, and then default presentation is role access form and bind to process data. Click outside. Now here, my process is ready.
Now I need to test my process. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the activate button to activate my process. When I will activate the process, it will add a new snapshot and let's say activate. So when you will activate, it will take snapshot of your application and application will be activated. Okay, application was activated. Now here you can see we have two roles in my application. One is applicate, applicant where I have added user TS and in the manager, I have added user as an AJ. So you can see I have logged in with AJ. Now what you need to do, you need to go to the workspace to initiate the request. So since I have logged in as an AJ, I will not be able to, okay, I can see, I can see that application raise request for application because I have a manage role and I can click on this role access app. Role provisioning, sorry. This is role provisioning and I can raise the request, but I wanted to open this workspace in the new incognito window and will raise request from user TS. So here you can see role provisioning. Click here. Now you can see enter name. Enter which application you need access. Let's say fusion access type. Let's say admin access end date. Let's say I want access till 31st of October. Test request. And submit. When you will raise your request, it will generate one process instance ID. So since I, I am I am I am a uh, part applicant. If I go to the task, I cannot see the task. And this task will be visible to the manager. So, but you can track your process here. You can see in progress, click here, and then it will show you it is assigned to the manager. But here you can see the audit to view how it is going further. So now let me go back to uh, another guy which has been logged in from user AJ and then click on the task. So task, go to the team task and then you can see role request received for Fusion. Now click here. You will see all the data. Let's say you can comment. If you want to comment, let's say rejected. Reduce your access and date. Let's say reject. So when you will reject, okay, so comment, you have to post or the comment will be posted when you reject it, you can see and then reject. Reject it now, I will go back to my user, go to the task and he will see the task here, resubmit your request role, provisioning access, click here. And there you can see the comment. rejected reduce your access end date let's say i wanted to have access only for 20 till 29 and now let's say submit again okay now i will go back and will refresh it all access request received for fusion you see the date has been changed and this time let's say approved. now your request will be approved and now you can you uh, and the request has been provisioned now you go to the analytics and you can see the role provision request one completed and it was a new request new instance you can see the completed instance so you can see the complete analytics here so this is how you can use Oracle process automation to, to automate your role access provisioning thing. I hope you find this video useful. If yes, please like, comment and share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get regular updates. You can follow me over LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook to get all those uh, videos time to time. Thank you. Bye-bye.